of under 10 miles an hour. Yes, sir. We're in four high. We're watching our angle. That's pretty cool. I should brought my other camera so I could have kind of showed the dash. Okay. So we're going to go up this hill and you're going to lose sight. And you're going to try to, it's going to start curving to the left and drop down. Okay. Oh, watch through here. Really good. Awesome. Oh, cool. We met rock and roll. I don't know why that came on. So stay to your left a little bit. Ow. A little bit more to the left. There you go. And then you're going to go down around this tree on your left. Okay. Oh, this is cool. But I thought it'd be, I thought it'd just be a couple of hills. Well, it's not real, real aggressive, but it's nice and tight. Is this like an F4X package? F4X? This is just a uh, King Ranch truck. So it doesn't have the skid plates? It does not have skid plates. We're kind of risking all this, huh? So Can there's a rock left? to your left that you'll yeah. watch and turn and left, correct. Turn left. Okay, so I've already been here once. Then you're going to make an immediate right up this hill. Oh, cool. And it's going to be very tight. Mm. So you got a stump that sticks out on your left, and then you watch yeah. your mirror on the right. Yep, very good. Watch this truck on the, uh, the, the side on the back. Does this have those sensors on the front and back? Obstacle sensors? It does not. Just the cameras. You guys got the wrong truck, man. I wanted the skid plates. I wanted the sensors. What is this? Well, it's not a Raptor. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but there's so many good yeah, packages. Yeah, no, there's Ford FX4, has. yeah. That are made for off-road. So this mirror will be close here. And then if you can stay to your right here, it'll help you set up for this hard left-hander. That sometimes is a three-point turn. Yeah, I can see where you that might, might you be. might get it. If I go fast enough, I bet I can. Yeah, that's true. Nope, we're gonna have to back up. So even in in, in reverse, you have the 360 camera as well. Yeah, I love that 360. I think that's awesome. I'm gonna make that come out in 2015. I'm not sure. And then when you get to the bottom here, if you want to favor the left side, we're making a hard right and turning right back up in here. So it's a very, very hard right on the inside of this brush pole. Oh, the inside. Someone moved that stake. Let me move that. I don't know who did that. That doesn't belong there. Only one SIM card. And then we're gonna go left around this tree. Stay right here. Yeah, I think they're closing up back at the shop at 3.30. They got another program there. Yep. Mm. This only takes about 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Ah. yeah. Warning. Tread lately. This curves to the right and it's going to get really tight through here and then back to the left once you crest this little hill. Oh, right there. Yep. Oh, that's cool. We do a lot of stuff with ATVs and we bounce through all this with rocks and everything. Is there an ATV guy? Yep. Most of my videos have me pulling either ATV or a toy hauler. Hold them up in, I'm in Rockies, Colorado, so we climb rocks all the time. That's awesome. Take these up the rocks. My son. Go to Moab once in a while. My son is a pro rider, ATV rider. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Well, he has much faster machines. I'm, I'm a slow old man rock crawler. Well, I, I the, don't get airborne too. I get airborne Raptors once in a while, but I don't do it. He races TT, so we're, oh, we're, yeah. we don't get real high, but we, we jump some. Yeah. 
we got uh, Rancher ATV Hondas, which have all the racks front and back yep. and the yep. electric shift. Tomorrow I pick up a new Honda Pioneer 1000 for review. Cool. And it holds five people, and it's got a little dump bed on it. And it's got paddle shifters. Yeah, they're it's really nice. Feet. My yeah. buddy has one. Yeah. His is, he's got his street legal. Yeah. Full. A lot of states you're like, Utah, you need street legal. And, well, Michigan you used to, yeah. and now you can't. So if you, huh. now the ones that are plated are worth a lot of money because you can't, <laughs> you, yeah. can't you can't do it anymore. So you're going to go to the right around this tree, hard right. Where you get confused at, and they got both ways. Come, yeah, come back to the right. That's why I get to come along. <laughs> That's, there's my value right there. <laughs> he went that way. Yeah. So this sign got knocked over. I'm not sure who was back here being rowdy knocking the signs over. Yeah. But go to the left here and then stop, and we'll put you in four low to crawl over these logs. So we'll go nice and slow. So. Okay. Neutral. Four low. So yeah, neutral is oh. the right. Try it, yeah. Four low. Shift in progress. There you go. Oh, once you're putting gear, it'll go right in. Yep. Yeah. Nice track. Oh, I'll, let you, I'll let you look at the logs as we go over them. Why are we going over this slow? That's the problem. <laughs> You can get airborne if you go faster. Holy <laughs> cow. Oh, lose your teeth. Yeah, really. Well, I got most of them gone. These are all fake ones, man. There you go. And you can go back into four high if you want, or you can leave it in low if you want to creep through here. It's your choice. Yeah, let's, let's play ball. Now, automatic, it probably won't even engage half the time. Not back here, no. Yeah. Sure, you got a parts truck out here. You just keep robbing stuff off. A rolling chassis. Well, there's a river running through it. Yep, there is. And actually, I asked the turtles to be up here on the log for you. I'm not oh. sure if they're still there or not. I don't have enough cameras. We'll have to go grab one, put them in the cab, and take a picture. No, they, they, they must have heard us come through and jump down. Yeah, those chicken turtles. Oh, there's one little one there. But, so to the right. And then we're going to hit the sippy hole here. Oh, good. How fast can it go to the sippy hole? Ten miles an hour. Which is about what you're doing. There you go. Let her rip. Mm -hmm. Hammer down. Mr. Trek here. We're still trying to figure everything out at this launch. This is the six. Uh, this is the five liter, the old Coyote engine. I guess this is similar to what's in the Mustang. Yes, sir. We all like the way this one sounds. It's awesome. So glad it's got a ten speed now. It's going to be pretty popular. Yes, we hope so. Just put a couple turbos on there, and we'll have something. <laughs> we know we have that for you. Well, yeah, that's a little different engine. Yeah, it's it's a little missing different a couple engine, cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> we like the EcoBoost too. <laughs> Now, Jim, what, what's your job at Ford? I'm the vehicle engineering manager for the F-150 platform. Oh, you're pretty high up the ladder then. Oh, some it, may say, others not. It, it, how do you pronounce your last name? Mosio, M-O-C-I-O, Mosio. Oh, cool. Well, I had the questions I had on the 5 liter. Now, I know the, the 3.5 EcoBoost went all the way up to 13,200 on trailer towing capacity. And this one, what is this? This one's 11,600? 11, 11.6, yes, sir. It's max capability. Okay. Now, this is same, basically the same payload as the 3.5 EcoBoost? Basically the same payload, right? So we offer both those powertrains as a heavy payload package, right? So we have the base package, 
And then specifically on the 5 liter and the 3.5 EcoBoost, we have a heavy payload package. Those max capability numbers have not changed. They're roughly equivalent uh, between the 5 liter and the 3.5 GTDI. From a towing standpoint, though, uh, we have uplifted significantly 3.5 GTDI. The 5 liter uplifted slightly, not quite to the extent. Right. And so it's what, 500 pounds more for the 5 liter? Yes, sir. Well, that's that's cool. That's and so you didn't have to do a whole lot of modification to it, other than the ten speed. Uh, on the five liter, really, the 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 avenue to enable us to go higher was really the ten speed. Okay, cool. Now on that three five, you were talking about that's had a lot of things. I mean, it had has bigger axle shafts on the rear end, yes, uh, different springs. We don't know exactly what's different about them, but that's that's a higher payload on those. And well, what else have you done? To, I mean, has the frame changed any? Yeah, that's frame modifications as well, right? So. The 5 liter didn't require a lot of chassis modifications or modifications of the load-bearing componentry to get that higher number because it shares a lot of the same components uh, from a load-bearing component standpoint as uh, to the 35 to its bigger brother, the 35 GTDI, in terms of a tow number, right? So, but for the 35 GTDI, the difference is, is that that's that's the platform max, right? So we had to grow that platform max capability to give the 35 GTDI a bigger tow number, right? So we did that through. Uh, frame modifications, right? So that rear stub of that frame has more gauge, right? It needs more load-bearing uh, capability to deliver that bigger number. We have a different axle in that lineup now for the 3.5 GTDI. Which means bigger bearings too, right? Uh, yeah, I mean the, the biggest difference happens to be in the shafts and the tubes, thicker tubes okay. and larger axle shafts. Again, it's all about um, up, up, uh, increasing the load-bearing capability of the componentry, right? It's got unique springs, unique shackles, unique bushings back there, right? So that we can preserve um, also um, our ability to declare those numbers with SAE compatibility. Right, and that's a, a Ford Sterling rear axle. It, yes, it is. Yeah, okay. it's actually in our lineup today, just with a different final drive ratio, uh, and that's the beautiful thing about it is we have an offering unique in the industry, which is a heavy payload package, right? That our competitors do not offer. That package has a lot of unique componentry because it has very big payload numbers, right? So what we did is we took, we had to design some new componentry, but we took a lot of that componentry from that platform, mm -hmm. from that, and brought it into the Max Trelato package to give it that excess capability for the bigger numbers. Well, cool. And well, the uh, so the the payload on this is how much now on a five liter? On the five liter, it's uh, three thousand two hundred and seventy on that package. Yes. Okay. And how much on that three point five? Um, EcoBoost. I believe it's about 60 pounds less. Okay. Close. Don't know yeah. exactly off the top of my head. Well, I keep thinking of V8, eight cylinders versus a V6. I keep thinking it'd be less, but you got turbos, you got intercoolers, you got all that stuff, so you got the heavier engine components. Yeah, it's really the as installed components that come along with the GTDI uh, that make that difference. I mean, they have the, the 5 liter and the 3.5 GTDI share the same uh, gross, vehicle, gross vehicle weight rating. It's the, it's the weight difference, the curb weight difference of the truck that makes up those two different uh, payload numbers. And it's, in fact, the 3.5 GTDI with that as installed componentry, like the charger cooler, for example, is slightly heavier than a 5 liter. That's what makes up that difference. Oh, cool. Now, the limited edition that comes with 3.5, does it come with that heavy payload package you're talking about? Uh, no. The, limited? No, the limited uh, edition is uh, uh, available in the base payload package only. Okay. Well, we got more more numbers. We got more traders we can tow with this puppy, and that sounds like fun. But I'm good. so the rear gower is, is up now on the three five EcoBoost with that thirteen thousand two hundred pound yes trader capacity. by two hundred and fifty pounds yes okay versus cool. the base the base non max trailer tow package yes well that's good. Well, you know, I remember when the Eco when the uh, new one fifty came out with the box frame. It was what seventy thousand psi on the frame. Is that, I don't know if that's just certain sections of the frame. Is it higher than that now? Or it was a crazy number because, you know, we're used to 50,000 on semis, and there, that was one of the marketing things was 70,000 PSI, yeah, and I didn't. The numbers, yeah, I don't know those exactly off the top of my head. I'd have to get you the right person to answer that question. Okay, so it's thicker, smart steel, or whatever that's called, and it's high strength steel. High strength steel. <laughs> okay, because smart steel belongs to somebody else. And then that's, uh, so that means higher carbon or just thicker metal, I guess. Yeah, yeah different. Okay different material, stronger material, okay. right? And so, um, and, and we've overlaid additional gauge in this case to give yeah. us the bigger number for the for the capability. Oh, cool. So has the receiver hitch changed any? Uh, the receiver hitch had to be upgraded slightly as well, again, for the okay. bigger number. Okay, it's not a class five range, it's no. a class four? No. Okay. Okay. Well, any, any secret things you want to share? Well, we're just a couple <laughs> friends here talking. I think I'm good. Oh, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, you guys. <laughs> well, thanks. Thank I you. appreciate it, yeah, Jim. Thank you very it, was, much. it was fun. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll turn it over to Sean Tant, who's going to take you through uh, the uh, even tougher part, kind of the uh, the uh, uh, design uh, portion of our demonstration. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Todd. Well, first of all, let me let me say thank you for being with us today. Um, this is an important day for us, and and as you could tell, um, we have a lot of pride in F series. It wasn't too long ago we finished up the, the 2015 F-150. And we immediately began the process of thinking, how can we make this even better, even bolder, even tougher? And the result is the 2018 F-150 we have here today. Um, every line, every surface, every fillet, every radius, every detail is designed for a reason. And, and it's all to deliver the visual message. Um, the first thing that we did was we, we wanted to bring the F-150 in alignment with the all-new Super Duty from a visual standpoint. After all, the Super Duty is the F-150's big brother. You know, they share DNA. Um, the first thing we did was redesign all new headlamps. We have the C-clamp headlamp design that, that wraps around the grill and visually holds the grill in place. And think of it like a, um, like a, well, like a machine puzzle piece that fits together perfectly. And, and, and holds the grill and the front end. Um, so right here we have the high series lamp and this is the all LED and the signature lighting now wraps around each of the elements. Let me just turn those on for you. And it really is quite stunning, especially at night. If this truck's behind you, you, you can't mistake it for anything else on the road. And then the LED side marker light blades really kind of interesting too. And we really like those little touches. Um, the next order was to redesign all the grills. We have six different grill geometries, and the whole idea was to design a horizontal grill to take advantage of the width of the front end. So this, the grill you see here, this is the King Ranch grill. Um, we have six different grill geometries. Um, within each series, um, we have um, different uh, finishes available on each of these grills. Like say, take Lariat for instance, you can get the Lariat grill, you can get the Lariat Chrome package, which is another variation on that grill. Um, the, the Lariat Sport, which is yet another variation, a monochromatic variation. And then the Lariat Sport appearance package, which is a, a different ge grill geometry altogether. This is the, um, the mesh grill that we're introducing this year. And, and we haven't done a mesh grill since, oh, I don't know, 2008. It's been quite a while. We've been looking for an opportunity to do it. It's a great sporty look, and, and we finally found it, and <clears throat> so it's here. Um, the next thing we did was we designed a, a new upper fascia that goes across the width of the truck, and, and all new tougher looking bumpers. And, and in addition to that, we redesigned all aerodynamics in our, in our air dams for a 4x4 and 4x2. Um, on the side, we've carried forward all the signature design cues and DNA, the drop belt, um, the chamfered rear cab, the round wheel openings, and incidentally, we have six new wheels um, in the lineup for 18, starting with 18 inch going all the way up to 22 inch for the limited buyer. Around the back end, we started with all new tail lamps, and, and you can't see it from where you're, you're standing, but this is the, um, this is the um, LED tail lamp right here that has the uh, signature lighting. They're again wrapping around the elements and containing them um, which is a reoccurring theme you'll see in the front. So there's a continuity between the front and the rear. Um, also, this has the integrated blind spot information system. Um, that's built right into the lamp. The next thing we did was we designed new tailgates. So the XL, XLT, and Lariat will have F-150 stamped into the tailgate. And, the, um, and, and we also have three new tailgate appliques for King Ranch, for Platinum, and for Limited. And those are available in, in satin aluminum. Um, on the interior, we've got uh, three new interior environments. Uh, we have Kingsville for King Ranch. We have Platinum that has Dark Marcella now. And Limited has Navy Pier. And in addition to that, we have uh, new, uh, new, interior, um, for, uh, new interior colors for the XLT Sport Appearance, or the Sport Package. Um, Trying to think, we have new exterior colors: gray stone, guard, lead foot, and magma red. And you know what? I think that's about it. I'm going to uh, introduce uh, a guy that I've worked with for for many years now. Um, 
He's our chief program engineer for F-150, and he knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. And he's a nice guy, too. Jerry Farrell. Okay, welcome everybody and good morning. Um, I want to start by just going back three years um, when we changed the game with the um, all aluminum um, alloy um, cab on top of the fully boxed steel frame um, where we took 700 pounds out um, of the vehicle and we reinvested that weight savings into more power along with better fuel economy. So it was an and solution for our customers, no compromises. We increased the capability and you had better corrosion and denting resistance. So our promise back then was to build on that foundation, that very solid foundation, and, and with innovative technology and, and customer benefits beyond that. So that set the foundation. Our promise was to improve on that foundation and that's what we did for 2018 model year. So we're, we're tougher, we're smarter, and we're more capable now with the new 2018 model year. So speaking just to capability, um, with 18 model year, we increased towing by 1,000 pounds. So we're now best in class still with an additional 1,000 pounds um, in towing, getting us to 13,200 pounds. Um, again, best in class before, still best in class. Um, and we did that um, a number of ways. We increased the frame gauge on the rear end of the frame. Um, the mid rails of the frame were up gauged. Um, we had increased the steering um, gear. Um, we also front axle tubes up gauged. A number of things that got us that thousand pounds of increase in towing. Um, GCW. We increased GCW to 18,500 pounds now, um, and then still best in class payload before and now at 3,270 pounds. Um, so that, from a capability standpoint, that's where we stand. Um, moving on to smart, um, smart technology, um, Todd kind of mentioned it previously. Um, these, these smart technology features are all designed with the customer in mind. Um, customer focus, things that help improve how they use the vehicle, what they use the vehicle for, um, more efficient with the vehicle. Um, so a couple of the new features for 18 model year is the pre-collision assist um, with pedestrian detection. So what that is now, it's, it's a system that as you approach a vehicle or a person in front of you um, too rapidly, you will get a visual warning, which is the, the red lights on the base of the windshield. You'll get an audible warning with, with beeping, and you'll get a tactile warning with the steering wheel as you're holding the steering wheel. Um, and then if you're still not reacting, the vehicle will brake. Um, so that's pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection. Um, the next feature we've got that's new for 18 model year is adaptive cruise control with stop and go. Um, what this feature does is, as you set the distance um, um, of the vehicle um, in front of you, it will maintain that distance with cruise control on. As that vehicle slows, it'll hold that distance that you've set. And as that vehicle stops in front of you, the, the, your vehicle will also stop by itself. As that vehicle starts moving forward, if it's less than three seconds, your vehicle will proceed moving forward and maintain that distance to the vehicle in front of you. If it's more than three seconds, you hit resume and the vehicle will again resume and maintain that distance. Um, so that's stop and go. Um, and then other still um, class exclusive features, um, Todd mentioned it, um, Bliss with trailer coverage. Um, that's another great feature for us that's, that's tied to our, our whole trailer tow experience to improve and help customers tow trailers. Um, that will now also um, protect the trailer behind you with the Bliss indicator um, as vehicles are approaching from the side. Um, and then other features, we've got tra trailer backup assist. Um, Todd mentioned that. Um, 2016, we brought that in. Box Link is a great system that we brought out in 15 model year class exclusive. Um, really helps you um, tie your loads down, keep them from moving around, 
um, integrated loading ramps. Those actually use the box link system um, to hold the ramps in place when you're not using them. And when you're using them, you can just pull them out and use them. Um, so those are some of the features, great class exclusive features that we've that we've had and that we've added for AT model year. Um, so I think I think that was it for me. I think now we're going to bring up Pete Dowding, who is our powertrain chief, and he's going to take you through our great powertrain story for uh, our power improvements. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, the, my name is Pete Downing, as Jerry said, and I'm the powertrain chief engineer here at Ford Motor Company. And it gives me great pleasure to talk to you about our powertrain story. So I, I appreciate all the great work that Sean's done and all the great engineering goes into the truck, but the heart of the truck really is the powertrain. So this is, uh, for me, the piece you don't get to see. So we put some on stands so you can uh, take a look around, and I'll be around here uh, after the presentation to answer any more detailed questions you might have about the different powertrains that we got. So we've got five gasoline powertrains now uh, in the F-Series, and I'll take you through them all one at a time, and what we've been busy working on since, uh, since the last release of the product. So we'll begin with the entry engine at a 3.3 liters. If uh, you remember, this used to be a 3.5 liter engine. So we've downsized it. It's now 3.3. We've got more power, more torque, and even more fuel economy coming from this engine. And there's a lot of unique design features that have gone in there, not the least of which is uh, adding external EGR to the engine to improve fuel economy. A lot of detailing changes on the inside of the engine to reduce friction. This obviously helps to uh, drive fuel economy. And we've added uh, direct injection to the PFI system. And you'll see this is a common theme now across all of the gasoline engines here with the F-Series. So the DI, adding the, the addition of DI is giving us uh, extra power and torque boost to the engines. And the PFI we're using for the fuel economy. So the combination of the two is giving us the customers even more capability from these engines. So with the 3.3, so going down in displacement, we've got eight additional horsepower and 12 foot pounds of torque coming from this engine, which is a pretty significant improvement. On the 2.7, we have no change in power but we were chasing after torque and fuel economy. So an additional 25 foot-pounds of torque coming out of this 2.7 liter engine. And this again is added uh, with the PFI and the DI. Uh, we've got a high pressure cooled EGR system on here. We've increased the compression ratio from 10 to 10.3 to one. And we've also got a burial displacement oil pump, which is uh, helping us obviously with the uh, fuel economy. All of these engines also feature stop-start. And when you drive them, you obviously get to experience that in, in a, about 10 or 15 minutes time, you'll be able to experience that stop-start transition, which obviously helps again the customer with fuel economy. On the five liter, we made a lot of changes on the five liter engine here. 395 horsepower coming out of this five liter block, with, uh, which is an increase of 10 horsepower and an increase of uh, 13 foot-pounds. And if you followed the work that we did on Voodoo, which is the engine that we put in the, in the Shelby, this is, and we put a spray bore block in there to get to the 5.2 liter displacement. We're using that spray bore technology now on this five liter. So it's going into a higher volume product. So there's no liners in the bore of this five liter anymore. So this is quite a significant uh, change for the engine. A uh, big upgrade in compression ratio up to 12 to 1, new intake manifolds, new rods, new main bearings, and as I said on the other engines, uh, stop style. And finally, uh, the 3.5 EcoBoost engines, 375 horsepower, 474 pounds uh, feet of torque, and the beast of the bunch with the Raptor engine here at 450 horsepower and 510 foot pounds of torque. So, a, an incredible range of horsepower and torque uh, capability from each of these engines, all with fuel economy upgrades, leading to, as you can see on the, on the board behind me here, at least one mile per gallon improvement in every one of the products. Coupled to these great engines, uh, we've put our new 10-speed transmission. So each of the engines, with the exception of the 3.3, which remains with this big 6-speed, has this new 10-speed transmission. We have an example of it behind you that you can take a look at later on. 
I really can't wait for you guys to actually go and drive this and experience the combinations of, of these engines with this 10-speed uh, transmission. I think you're really going to enjoy what you find in, that, in these vehicles. So, so this has the ramps inside. Is this low on oil or what's the deal? Is this a six cylinder? What's in this puppy? I'm not entirely sure exactly. It's definitely a V8. I do not know what's on that, That's a V8? Yep. One. Holy cow. White wall tires. No, I'm taking it. Hey, get out of my truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is really a V8? Let's bring it up for you. Because I mean, it's a flathead. Cool. So this is a fake 48. <laughs> uh, Charles F. Kettering. Uh, mm, this uh, is a 1911? No, no. In 1911, they. Uh, General Motors uh, uh, Delco division, Dayton Electric Company. Mm -hmm. They came out with the electric starter in 1919. It started being available on the Model T. Okay. On both the cool. T and the TT truck. The yeah. uh, TT truck was introduced July 27th, 1917. Uh, and uh, this happens to be a 1920 example, but it's identical to um, the uh, original. Uh, and what's the TT truck. mean? Just uh, t it's Model a one-ton chassis. Uh, oh, so they just uh, gave that the designation. All 20 horsepower engines, two-speed planetary transmission. Uh, the Model T was introduced itself on September 27th, uh, 1908 as a 1909 model. Uh, and by May 31st of 1927, they had built 15 million 7,030 in North America. Wow. 650,000 elsewhere by the time they built the last one in August of 1927 in Manchester, England. What's your name, uh, sir? Mike. Mike I'm Skinner. I'm a board member you. with the Ford Pickett <laughs> Avenue plant. Sure. Oh, cool. Uh, and, well, that's um, awesome. Now, 1924, when they sold 2,120,000 Model Ts, that represented 57% of the U.S. market, 50% of the world market, and over half the cars in the world by that time of any age were Ford Model Ts. Wow, well, so I know. Truly, the car put the world on wheels. Well, vehicles yeah. back in that era, they had a lot of maintenance. You know, it's like a helicopter you got. Was, was it, is it the you rod bearings, leather? You, well, or you, the you change the, you bearings? change the, you change the um, oil every two to four hundred miles. I change my oil once a year, because I don't go more than three or four hundred miles with my tees. Okay. Uh, usually in parades and tours and things, but um, we've got about fifty cars on display at the Paquette plant, the birthplace of the Model T, and the first plant built by the Ford Motor Company. So this happens to be a display vehicle. Cool. It was donated by the uh, the late owner. Well, owner the leaf family. springs really go over like that. That Corvette had that back in the 70s. Yes, that's right. So, well, and the old joke about a Model T is, what do you call shock absorbers? Passengers. There's no shock absorbers. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty bumpy. When the Model T T truck was introduced, by the way, we're having trouble with the key, uh, so we've got a, a on off. Uh, switch there, that's temporary. Now the pedal is um, one of those reverse and the other one's a yeah, two-speed. Yeah, yeah, what you've got is when you look at the uh, the pedals, the one on the left is your clutch. All the way down is low gear, all the way up is high gear. The middle is reverse. The one on the right is the brake, which is two cotton bands on your transmission. The big lever over here is your emergency brake. Right. Uh, and yeah. then the TT truck, the manufacturer's um, uh, spec on this was 18 miles an hour. But you uh, see this, the uh, lever right there? Uh -huh. That's an aftermarket Warford transmission. By 1924, there were 5,000 companies that made accessories for Ford Model Ts. So that's that an auxiliary transmission? Yes, and that'll it's get you up to 25 miles an hour. Wow. Instead of, well, instead of 18. This is a modern truck. And then this, the Ford only sold you the chassis from uh, in, in the late teens and early 20s. So this happens to be a, uh, a um, cab that was built by a company called Field Durable Bodies in uh, Owasso, Michigan. Oh, cool. Up between Lansing and, uh, and uh, Flint, Michigan. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's a one ton, but they didn't have duels on their one ton back then. No, no, yeah. no. And of course, they're the same wooden spokes, but heavier duty. Uh, than a standard Model T. Yeah, here their spokes they're are very detachable. expensive. It's hard to find someone to make wheels I, for the, My My 14, I just had them respoked, and it was an Amish group out of Indiana. 
And if you notice, you see these right here? Oh yeah. It's a detachable rim. Oh. So you actually take the wheel and the tire off and swap it out if okay. you get a flat tire or anything. Well, that's good, that's good. Yep. Wow, well, that's an awesome truck. I don't see any oil leaks or anything. It's not dripping. Well, <laughs> it does, it does. And the wiring uh, should be hidden up under there. And uh, the battery, that is the location of the battery, but the battery wouldn't have the green shut off on it. Oh yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. And we got tons of pickup truck questions, right? Right. Where do we go for the answers? We go to the Truck Nuts book. Because we're truck nuts. <laughs> and we wrote the book, Truck Nuts. We're nuts about truck. The ultimate guy to buy a truck or yep. to look at a truck or judge at a truck. You know, whether it's diesel versus gas, new versus used, what your teenagers should learn about trucks, all that. You do all kinds of cool tests. Yeah, we do a lot of testing. We do the Ike Gauntlet, world's toughest towing test up the mountain and down the mountain. We do MPG testing on the highway, loaded with trailers. Yeah. We do off-road testing. A lot of that data is in this book as well, and it's a one-stop shop for truck information. That's true. We test trucks maximum capacity up to biggest grades you can do on the interstate. Yep. So we really put them to the test. And, you know, you can get all the facts you can't find anybody else. We do MPG tests which you can't find on any sticker anywhere. So, you know, all that stuff that you can't find is in the book. And you can find the book at trucknutsbook.com. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all the other bookstores as well. So read about your truck nuts. <laughs>